What's going on YouTube? Welcome to part 2 of my guide to overclocking. If you haven't already seen part 1, click on the video and video to see the basics on getting started. The gameplay in the background is Crisis 3 multiplayer because watching gameplay is certainly a lot more interesting than watching static powerpoint slides, especially since you're on YouTube and not in class. Or maybe you are watching YouTube in class. Then internet high five coming your way. I'll have subtitles up later to help make the commentary clearer. Anyways in this video, I'm going to cover overclocking frequently asked questions, compare overclocking to overvolting, and offer some free additional software utilities outside of the ones I've talked about in my first video. Let's get started. One question or combination of questions I get asked every day is, is it worth it to overclock? Should I overclock? And do I need to overclock? I'll address those in order. In terms of overclocking being worth it, it is 100% up to you you will get an increase in system performance relative to the amount of overclocking you do, but you also get side effects accompanying the performance. Do you mind your computer using more power that you had to pay for in your energy bill? The extra heat generated by the graphics card? Your fans working harder to dissipate the heat? The amount of noise accompanying the fans working harder? And a potential decrease in operational GPU lifespan? I can't be the one to tell you how much those factors bother you. You, and only you, are the final arbiter of what you want out of gaming performance, and how much you are willing to deal with the side effects of overclocking for gaming goals. For the question, should I overclock? I will respond in turn with, it's all up to you. Overclocking in 2013 is much safer than it has been in years past, and there are many free and easy to use utilities for you to meet your overclocking goals. Again, you yourself determine gaming goals and whether overclocking can help you reach those goals. Now the last question, do I need to overclock? I will respond with a definitive no. It's your computer and gaming time. So like the answers to my previous questions, only you can assess whether your current setup meets your gaming goals. Another common question is, how much does overclocking actually shorten the lifespan of my graphics card? Unfortunately, there is no validated simple scalar multiplier for X percentage overclock reduces GPU life by X hours. Simple reasoning would deduce that overclocking by 10% reduces life by 10%, but that's not all there is to it. Heat is a factor, but good overclockers monitor their graphics card heat and keep it low. Fans and cooling mechanisms can be replaced, so wearing those out isn't the biggest concern. But to achieve a desired operating frequency, you have to increase the power demands which increases the current in capacitors, transistors, and other circuit board components at a rate higher than the overall rate. On the other hand, it is debatable whether overclocking reduces lifespan at all, provided you are staying within prudent voltage and temperatures. But nonetheless, be sure that these graphics cards are well constructed and rated to perform at a high level for years, possibly even a decade. It's likely that your PC power supply could fail first. The bottom line is that the functional lifespan of a graphics card is much shorter than the physically operational lifespan, in that the technology will be obsolete and unable to reach your performance goals long before you have worn it out completely. This closing statement segues well into the next commonly asked question. What causes a GPU to naturally fail over time or die of old age? This is a very expensive question that again unfortunately doesn't have a very simple answer. An obvious answer is temperature and exposing your circuits to high heat wears them out, but again practical overclocking has us use the cooling mechanisms on our graphics cards to keep them at lower temperatures so that they don't throttle back. Like mentioned in the previous section, transistors, capacitors, and resistors are all undergoing more current when operating at a higher clock speed. Video RAM is also susceptible to failing. The underlying physics of it all is too complex for me to delve into in this video, and I'm not sure if I'm the best person to explain it because for my Bachelor's of Science degree in Social Psychology, I only had to take introductory physics classes for degree requirements. The final causal factor to GPUs dying of old age is expensive to approach scientifically, but you can sleep soundly knowing that your hardware will work for years if you take good care of it. The following topic is overclocking versus overvolting. By this point, especially if you've seen my overclocking part 1 video, you all have a good understanding of what overclocking is and the mechanism behind it. 
you will also know that I did not raise the voltage in MSI afterburner for my overclock. This is because I've met all my overclocking goals without needing additional voltage. While overclocking is safe, overvolting could damage your GPU. Some cards don't even come voltage unlocked, and you then need to modify the BIOS. Voltage by definition is the electrical potential difference, and a higher voltage creates a higher pressure gradient, which will in turn drive more current through your GPU. The relationship of voltage to power is the best described with this equation, P equals IV, where V is voltage in volts, I is current, and P is power. Power is further defined as the rate of energy transfer and is measured in joules per second. For over volters, what this means is that if you increase voltage, you in turn can drive more current and achieve a higher power. This can help your GPU obtain the necessary power needed for higher clock speeds. However, you will create a lot more heat that your GPU needs to work to dispense. What could cause ultimate harm to your GPU from having too high of a voltage is unrestricted current flow, rapidly induced by demanding games or applications, and your GPU doesn't have the time to throttle itself down before the temperatures push your card to its breaking point. Since I personally have not experimented with overvolting, I'm not going to talk about it anymore this video. Most people will be fine without adjusting their core voltage. Adjusting voltage can be beneficial, but it is more for enthusiasts who want to get the best possible overclock down to the single digit megahertz and should be done so with precautions and possibly a custom cooling mechanism. I'm going to finish this guide by presenting other software that you can use to help you overclock. Precision X is a good program to use for Nvidia cards. Its interface is similar to MSI Afterburner and some prefer it. Unigine Heaven is a good program to use to test your overclock stability and run some benchmarks. You can run any preset you want or you can make your own custom graphics configuration, but ultimately this will test how stable your overclock is and you can compare your benchmark results with others. I hope you found this video informative and I thank you for watching it all the way through. Don't forget to leave a like rating, let me know if you have any questions. Subscribe to my channel to learn more about PC gaming and I'll see you next video.